Let me be truly honest. I'm very leery over PlayStation's current leadership. Herman Holtz's decision, for instance, around the release of Concord. And also, we can't forget Hiroki Totoki's recent comments around the lacking of gaming IPs. All this undoubtedly has me concerned on the new floor versus the ceiling surrounding PlayStation's new decision-making process. That said, amidst a year where concerns like mine were at a high for PlayStation, they just showed us that even in their worst day, they are still leagues better than the competition's best. Astrobot launched with a 90 plus Metacritic. And when you look at that, you can't help but examine the entire year and, and, and say to yourself, hmm, compared to what others told us they were going to bring across the street, a wounded PlayStation has completely surpassed them thus looking officially unbeatable. And that, my friends, has so many Xbox fanboys enraged. So we ask, is a final nail in the coffin on any type of console war attempts from Xbox? Or is it simply another example of media bias, Xbox tax, that Xbox can't overcome? We tackle all this in the next installment of The Spill, our gaming hot topic video series, Buckle up, get ready for a good show. Let's go. Yeah. What's up people, what's up people, what's up people? It is your boy, MM2K of Hard Knock Digital Culture, Cloud Dosage, and MM2K Gaming back again with another episode of The Spiel. This is where we talk the latest and greatest topic in the gaming news and our hot, hot button topic for the day is Astrobot for PlayStation 5 silences grifting fanboys. But before we get into all that, do us a huge favor that like button, hit a subscribe button and definitely rock those bells for notifications. So in order to break this one down, I'm going to do this in three parts. I'm going to bring, bring you the story and bring you everything that's been happening, right? That led us to this point. I want to talk about the counter to the story that's been going on in regards to the perception that these grifting fanboys tried to portray, but based upon Astrobot releasing and what we warned people it would possibly do when it released, if it released the way that kind of predicted it would, how that would just change the, the discourse of their grifting and leave them scrambling to find something else to do. And then lastly, we're going to give our conclusion. So again, for you to understand everything that has been going on, we got to start here. This is a story from IGN that happened on the third. Concord will be taken offline on September 6th and all players will receive a full refund. So Concord in less than two weeks since its launch has seen some of the most abysmal numbers we've seen for a AAA game in two to three decades. I mean, the engagement was horrific. And what made it even more embarrassing for PlayStation is that this was a PlayStation first party title, okay? Those come with this type of gravitas, you know what I'm saying? A type of aura to them. And they don't typically stink this bad. I was having a conversation with Cold Blood earlier with our members, um, so check out our member stream. Definitely when we get into a little bit more context around this. Um, but I was like, even PlayStation's worst efforts, which I don't think this particular game was bad at all. I just think it got a, a you know, it got a bad rap. Um, days gone. In PlayStation's worst first party stints. Okay, maybe a 70, but nothing like this. You know what I'm saying? Um, this was a stinker, not a stinker in like the worst game ever, but the rollout was so horrific and, and, and just so boneheaded from PlayStation um, that it, it makes you question what is, again, like I said in the, in the bumper, what is the decision making process like now? Like, I don't really see any regime of the PlayStation of old ever succumbing like this. Like I said, the worst that you've seen before was Days Gone. Still a great game that just happened to get a bum rap from the media. But that, that said, that's what jump started all this stuff, right? So you've had Xbox drifting fanboys loving that, right? 
they jumped all over that. And then Hiroki Totoki gave him more to feast on. He gave them more red meat. He said, uh, I guess in a business meeting, you know, after the, the dropping of Concord, this guy goes out there and says that PlayStation doesn't have enough IPs. They need more IPs. And when you further examine what the dude was saying, he's talking, he's not necessarily talking about game specific IPs. He's talking about IPs that can be spread across the board and used across the board. Like he references how there's gaps in, in crossover um, and, and, and the lack of spillage like between uh, PlayStation users and, and Crunchyroll, the anime service that, that Sony bought not too long ago. He talks about how he, there's a potential for that. So he's he's a talk he's he's addressing IPs in the fashion of look, we don't have a lot of IPs that have spillage into different sectors. That's what I want. In other words, the old adage of Xbox TV, 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 the failed adage of that. That's what you know. It all intents and purposes it looks like that he's trying to repurpose for it to only fail for PlayStation. But concerning enough. Those are the two things that happen in PlayStation that, again, should raise red flags. And even if you do get some chuckles from those fanboys, I mean, you, you, you can't be mad at them, right? But here's where it became a problem, right? They were dogpiling on these two things that were definitely discussion worthy, worth videos, worth whatever the ridicule. But they wanted to make that the talk of the town. They didn't want to talk anything Xbox. They only wanted to focus on PlayStation in these two things, which again, are embarrassing for PlayStation. Red flags for the decision-making process now under this new regime, but in no way, shape or form drops PlayStation at the level of Xbox. I'm going to be frank and honest here, and I don't care who likes it. Take a picture. I don't give a blink. It would take a thousand of these for PlayStation to drop to Xbox's level right now. As far as consumer appreciation, accolades in the community, all that stuff. So yeah, while you might get to chuckle from afar that the the, the king and, and, and his, uh, you know what I mean, his guard, they tripped over each other. Xbox is still the peasant <laughs> that's digging through the garbage looking for potato, potato skins and, and, and moldy bread. Enjoy your chuckles, but let's let, let's not get out of let, let, let's let's not get out of our britches here. All right. And so what they wanted to do was they wanted everybody to focus only on this while they ignored some significant things that were happening in their sector. Let's just go over what's been going on with Xbox. Well, we did have Astrobot that released, that put an end to all that. So maybe I should speak on that before we move the, to the woes of Xbox. But Astrobot did come, it released, and look at what's going on with Astrobot. This is the, uh, uh, a tweet from Team Asobi. They're talking about, you know, very a very special day. And it is for that team. I mean, just you just type in AstroBot on Twitter. Look at what you got. My buddy Paris said the best 3D platform I've played since Mario Galaxy 2. 10 out of 10. Uh, Jeff Keeley talks about his admiration for the game. Um, uh, Wario shows that AstroBot is a 95 open critic and currently at the time of this recording, 94 meta. Um, start your engines. Uh, the PlayStation AstroBot advertisement up there. Digital Foundry, AstroBot on PlayStation is virtually flawless, a joyous package of beautiful design, outstanding technology, and vibrant imagination. Um, right now, AstroBot and Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, the two games you can only get on PlayStation 5, are of the top three gaming content titles. Really, you might as well say the top two games, rated games, full-fledged games on Metacritic right now. You can only get those two on PlayStation 5. And it just it just goes on and on and on. So that's what put a halt to this foolery, this Tom foolery, this Astrobot. Can't forget about that. So I got to talk about that before we go to the whole the the, the hubris of the whole Xbox things that they wanted uh, those fanboys wanted you to forget. Now on to that hubris, right? First, so they want you to forget all this stuff that just happened purely like the last few weeks. They want you to forget about Indiana Jones. Which, after all the the misleading comments and in, 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 in the uh, all the bickering back and forth amongst the community, 
it is being released for PlayStation 5. Not the hugest shocker, but they went at a time that they didn't even let the Xbox people know when theirs was coming yet and announced the PlayStation versions coming at the same time, right? Then the following day, you get Phil that basically says, hey, this is a business. And he admits pretty much in so many words, we need PlayStation's money, as we've been telling you. But you guys have been fighting us rapidly, right? Then within the same showcase week, we find out that Avowed currently is targeting 30 frames. Now they might make a change, but the developers coerced by Xbox, uh, likely, had the audacity to say, for a game like this, you don't need 60 frames per second. When 60 frames per second for all intents and purposes, it defines this generation. It's what justify people making the leap and paying another $500 for another box was 60 frames per second. But I digress. They also want you to forget this. Just in this week, it kept, it kept hitting for Xbox. Phil Spencer goes to um, PAX East, I believe it is, and admits, hey look, I made some horrible decisions that could have hurt Xbox. One in particular is, remember when all that stuff was happening with Xbox and we really didn't have the exclusives to counter or lack in resolution and stuff like that it ended up becoming, becoming a, a, a scarlet letter for us? Well, the thing that could have definitely combated that and, and whisked that problem away, an exclusive deal with Destiny, uh, I looked over. I didn't think it was important. And, and, and then he, he talks about, in, in such a whimsical but detached way, how he passed over other things. I mean, it was just unreal to hear this. But then, shout out to Nib, he posts something, a, a collage of something that was brewing up again this, just this week alone about all of the developers that were having woes messing with the Xbox Series S, having a design for it. We did a show on it. We showed you something that was concealed by Brad Sams, an unlisted video that he had out there. Don't worry, we downloaded it. But he had to unlist it because when he was talking about Lockhart, AKA, which is the code name for the Series S, how developers gawked at it and he tried to let the public know about it and they attacked him and he unlisted the video. But we were warned back in 2019 about the problems the Series S was going to provide. And look at that. Five years later, he goes, uh, a, a, a collage of all the accounts. Shout out to Nib for putting that out there, right? And then last but certainly not least, when you thought that the problems just laid at the rest of the Series S being a bottleneck, you got Xbox not even talking to the dang developers. A no had to come out there and threaten to not be releasing day and day. Now, I'm not sure if, the, if this could change in enough time because Microsoft finally came out and apologized and addressed the issue, but they ain't talked to Microsoft in months to complete the certification process for them to release the game. So they had to come to the public and, and, and get the public's help. And Phil Spencer finally responded. Absurd. Completely absurd. There's more, but I ain't got all dag on day. <laughs> I wanna play some games. But there's definitely more. They wanted you to just focus on Concord and some goofy comments that Totoki said and ignore all that that's happening back to back to back to back to back. He even had some creators that had the audacity of trying to, in a buffoonish way, try to slide in some quote unquote positive Xbox stuff to give you the illusion that things are on the up for Xbox systemically things are on the down for playstation what did they try to use they tried to use this this bogus story that apparently is from someone at xbox i'm gonna lay it at the feet and i'm gonna talk about this later too in our podcast so if you're not if you're watching this as part of the podcast just stay tuned if you're not watching it as part of the podcast we'll tell you how you can access that podcast but we are i'm putting this at the foot of sarah Bond. we had sarah Bond tell a creator at um at a show earlier in the year the summer games fest that it was business reasons and the creator came out publicly and, and admitted to such i think that was their first attempt of trying to roll this 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 mess of a story out that didn't work so they go to other reporting sources a paul tassie 
IGN. Those are groups you know that are not real journalists. They, they don't vet stuff. And look, I have nothing against Digital Foundry, but they're not journalist journalists. They're, they're, they're a group. They're a, 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 what do you call it? Um, a technical think tank that writes stories, but they don't vet stuff. If you really want this information to get out, you're bringing this crap to Jason Schreier, who's going to ask you the right questions. Hell, even Jeff Grubb and Special Nick, who push back on the story. If you really want us to believe, if this is really the truth, without a shadow of a doubt, why is it in their hands? I can tell you why. Right? But stay tuned to that podcast for that, or, or how to get access to it. Astrobot shows you that even when bad stuff happens for PlayStation, they know how to make up for it rather quickly. And to be frank, we're still waiting on Xbox under Phil Spencer to make up for his disastrous tenure 10 years later. Here's what I got to say in closing. Xbox gaming in a competitive sense is cooked fanboy this is my message directly to you they're cooked you of the staunchest most rabid wing of the community you got to get this through your thick skulls and i know it's difficult because you've been reduced to jockeying for a third party company and you can't let it go look there's nothing wrong with having a favorite publisher we all have them but as i've shown you here because of the power of the PlayStation Marketplace, you cannot touch them or keep them down for long because they focus on quality. They know that quality wins the day, not gimmicks, not content creators, not bogus stories, right? And to further extenuate that point, I, I, I say this, let me show you guys this. Now this is me on the hill, this is on the heels of me and I'm still talking about it. Me giving my grievances about the PlayStation leadership, right? And some changes where I think they're going too far in the weeds. And my issues with how Concord was rolled out, the fact that it was even rolled out at all. I still have this to say because reality is reality, regardless of how I'm feeling or how you're feeling. I said in a questionable year for SIE leadership, PlayStation 5 still manages to, one, have Wukong as a console launch exclusive, likely due to the failures of Xbox and, and the, the the lack of lore and the lack of sure will that it creates of even putting too much time on the platform. Well, we'll talk about that in the podcast. Number two, score another 90 plus first party game. And three, have two of the top rated games playable only on PlayStation 5. Establishing a marketplace with unique, highly sought exclusives is pig dirt. PlayStation Salt days that you guys were enjoying via an Xbox are going the way of the Dodo Bird. That's it from your boy. Let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below. Like I always say, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. They will lead you to Hard Knock Digital Culture, Cloud Dosage, MM2K Gaming. If you are watching this as a um, as part of the podcast, in a row podcast number 74 stay tuned we're going to talk more in detail about this but if you're watching this as a standalone video hold on to your horses we're going to show you how on the left hand side how you can get access to all of our in a row podcasts including that one with that said you have a wonderful gaming day peace